so my name is Francois Tijot and uh, I'm reachable on IRC or by email. I generally hang out on Freenode. Um, I'm an independent consultant and system engineer. I'm an X11 and a BSD user since uh, many years now. Um, I've been a Dragonfly dev developer since 2011. I originally ported the i915 and a Radeon driver to Dragonfly. And I have been updating the i915 drivers and them. Uh, Dragonfly is a Unix-like operating system. It's a BSD descendant. Uh, it was originally forked from FreeBSD in 2003 by someone called Matthew Dillon, which, uh, who is a sort of genius uh, in his own way. Um, Dragonfly is high performance and scalable. It uses per-core replicated resources. Um, and many operations are naturally lockless. So it really likes uh, high core count, SMP systems, and so on. Uh, Dragonfly uses an innovative Hammer file system. A newer version will be coming this year. Um, it's really great for disaster recovery or heavy storage in general. The Amor file system can retain history. All transactions um, can be kept on disk for up to 60 days. And history can be streamed between uh, local and remote file systems. Um, it can be used in a sort of real-time way. So it's really great for disaster recovery and general heavy storage um, systems. Uh, there's also integrated uh, deduplication, cheap deduplication. You don't need tons of memory to deduplicate data. It's uh, great uh, with uh, small servers like uh, machines having only four gigabytes or so. And I've be, I have been successfully using it uh, on some client systems using uh, DNA or proteins or generally um, scientific data. Um, and now I will focus on the graphics drivers. So all graphic drivers these days are based on Linux. There are many, many people, uh, corporate um, uh, developers, uh, developing, uh, writing graphic drivers for Intel in particular, but also AMD and so on. Nobody is working on Dragonfly. All of them work in Linux. Um, I guess nobody has heard of Dragonfly in that uh, area, so I have to manage uh, with the current situation and uh, port the Linux drivers to Dragonfly. And the easiest way I found to do that is actually not to port the drivers, but to re-implement a Linux subsystem in the Dragonfly kernel. Um, most modern graphics in uh, Linux use something called the DRM subsystem, which means Direct Rendering Manager. Um, this subsystem and um, the drivers themselves directly use tons of Linux APIs. And um, I had to re-implement these APIs and, um, in general, make the drivers believe they were running in a Linux kernel. So for that purpose, the Dragonfly kernel can be considered an implementation of Linux. Um, I was quite lucky for many BSD systems already at limited Linux uh, API support, limited Linux uh, API implementations. Um, when I first started, um, OpenBSD was probably the um, most successful BSD um, for DRM support. 
Uh, there were many APIs. I took well, I took the implementations from OpenBSD. There was also a um, specific subsystem for some uh, high-performance network devices in FreeBSD using Linux APIs. Um, at some point, uh, NetBSD people decided to also port the DRM subsystem and uh, implementing many things uh, missing in Dragonfly. So I took a bit from all other free, uh, BSD projects. Um, we also add some subsystem we manage to use to re-implement other Linux APIs like IDR, which is a sort of a small integer um, registering a subsystem. Um, occasionally, we also took some uh, implementations from Linux itself. Um, contrary to popular beliefs, um, all the Linux kernel code is not under a GPL license. There are many pieces under um, more liberal licenses like MIT, um, X11, and so on. And this is particularly true for DRM subsystem and drivers. Um, our Linux compatibility layer keeps growing from year to year. We are now have uh, more than 100 uh, include files. Um, they mostly are wrappers for um, other um, APIs which were already implemented as Unix APIs or BSD specific APIs. Um, most of the wrappers are under a too close BSD or MIT license. Um, the i915 kernel driver is mostly at the same state, in the same state um, as the one found in Linux uh, 4.7.10. Uh, we support Core 2 to cable-like GPUs, which makes it um, CPU, GPUs from about 2005, 2006 to the current generations um, of hardware. Um, more recent Linux version support is being worked on, and many people have helped. Um, general story of the i915 um, kernel driver. Uh, in 2010, there was a GSOC, a Google Sum of Code um, project. Um, a student uh, called um, David Shaw tried to work on uh, i915 support. He did many things, but for many reasons, um, I don't really know his work was not integrated um, into the Dragonfly uh, source code uh, repository. So it was a bit of a waste, but at least when I um, try to understand what happened years later. Uh, I found many discussions and ideas um, I simply could reuse without trying to waste time uh, finding out myself uh, what had to be done. Um, I started to work on porting i915 two years later in summer 2012. At that point, FreeBSD had just released um, new port of uh, i915 um, from Linux, and it was working on current hardware. And since FreeBSD and Dragonfly were somewhat closed due to the shared history, I decided to port uh, to port the drivers from FreeBSD and not directly from Linux. Uh, one year later, we had um, the driver working reasonably well. We had to implement uh, some low-level support for um, cache management, which we didn't expect at all at first. But that really was the missing point, uh, the missing piece, uh, which allowed us uh, to get the driver working. Um, after that, I discovered uh, FreeBSD had stopped updating its driver. Nobody told me exactly what was happening or 
what the situation was. People in the FreeBSD community, community apparently still believed a work in progress update uh, would be committed, would be pushed in the future, but uh, nothing happened. So I didn't really understand what was, was going on. And at some point, I decided to try porting uh, newer changes from Linux directly. And it was not until uh, one year later and we had um, working as well support, as well with the newest Intel uh, GPU generation at, the, at that time. And since then, I have been uh, steadily um, upgrading our Linux driver version. And we are now at um, the Linux 4.7.10 level. And all currently sold i915 hardware is supported out of the box. Um, DRAM Radeon is another driver. I um, started to port it uh, one year later than the i915 driver. Uh, it is currently mostly synchronized with the same Linux version, Linux 4.7.8. Uh, it uses a special subsystem for memory management, which is called TTM. Um, well, uh, virtual memory management is hard. Not many people understand um, really what is going on at its um, low hardware level. So it has been stuck on uh, the Linux uh, 3.11 uh, level for um, four years now. Um, there were also many people involved in debugging and helping uh, to improve um, various um, subsystems related to Radeon support. Uh, so the history was um, in uh, summer 2012, 2013, I started ported the Radeon driver. It was working about one year later. And at that point, we updated it from time to time to new world Linux versions, but it has been somewhat neglected. And it was not until this year that uh, uh, David Chaos, the original uh, GSOC uh, author, decided to partially update it to um, Linux 4.7.10. But unfortunately, um, there are problems with this update and um, there are talks of uh, a partial revert. Um, the AMD GPU driver is a new GPU, uh, GPU driver for newer Radeon hardware. Mm, I don't really know what the Radeon code names mean in terms of uh, commercial uh, graphic card names, but it's generally required for newer GPU families. And nobody is known to be working on it, and uh, this has not changed uh, since 2015. Uh, Nuvo support. Uh, Nuvo is the Linux uh, kernel driver for NVIDIA hardware. Um, NVIDIA hardware was never really well supported since uh, NVIDIA itself, the company, uh, loves to push his proprietary driver everywhere. Uh, support has actually regressed since uh, at some point there was a 2D accelerated driver in Xorg, but it has not been updated for years and uh, cannot be used with recent hardware. Um, so almost nobody in the Dragonfly community has NVIDIA hardware. I still played a bit with the driver and it poses an interesting challenge. Uh, some file names are present with the same names in different subdirectories and our build system uh, cannot compile them. Well, I guess it could be fixed by renaming some of them or changing the build system a bit, but there has not been, uh, been enough interest uh, for people to do that. And 
Well, actually, there was a bit of interest um, for NVIDIA hardware, but in order to disable it. And the only improvement we've had since uh, 2015 on that front is it is now possible to disable NVIDIA hardware on hybrid laptops. So people can now force the use of the i915 driver and use their laptop uh, out of the box with it. Uh, Visa, uh, we also have a Visa driver. It's interesting, it's um, basically using um, small firmware instructions. There's uh, very old and uh, low level uh, BIOS API. And it allows um, the use of NVIDIA hardware as a dumb frame buffer. It can also be used with some other GPUs like Intel and Radeon, but uh, since they have uh, accelerated drivers, it's only really useful for NVIDIA at this point. Uh, of course, nothing is accelerated, so if you try to display static images like pictures and uh, externs and so on, it's fine. But if you try to play video um, or animations, uh, well, everything will be dog slow. Um, no, all of these drivers, except Visa, use the um, generic DRM subsystem. And it's a bit of a mixed bag. For In order to be able to support uh, current hardware and um, update drivers and so on, I have somewhat neglected it. And so we have some parts up to Linux. 4.7.10, but others much older. Uh, like for example, we have no DRM master and no DM above support. Well, it's not really been uh, problematic with applications, but um, at some point it will probably become to implement the missing pieces. Uh, one of the recent changes was related to the I2C subsystem. Uh, the I2C bus is a low bandwidth bus and in um, general uh, it's used to provide additional information on um, video outputs like for example HDMI cables or even the old VGA connector. Uh, monitors um, can provide um, their prefer they can um, describe their preferred um, video resolution and other capabilities so that um, um, pcs and uh, other piece of pieces of equipment can um, auto configure themselves um, to use it automatically of course it isn't always perfect in working like um, the HDMI cable um, at the start of this presentation. I'm sorry for that. Uh, anyway, uh, the I2C subsystem is a Linux subsystem. I re-implemented it from scratch and finally pushed the changes to the Dragonfly kernel in October 2016. Um, it eventually replaces an old FreeBSD and Dragonfly specific subsystem called IIC, which was completely different. It used completely different APIs and for no good reasons. It was a bit of a hindrance um, when trying to upgrade the driver versions. And uh, it made it much easier for me to update the i915 driver. And at some point, uh, it, it would probably be a good idea to change the Radeon driver to use it also. It's currently only used by i915. Um, another big change this year has been uh, VGA switcheroo support. VGA switcheroo is another Linux subsystem used to manage hybrid graphics. Um, many laptops uh, nowadays are dual GPUs since Intel always integrates GPU in its low-end and uh, low-power processors. 
um, that some uh, companies uh, like to also provide a more powerful GPU, like uh, NVIDIA, 10 something MX, and so on, uh, on some laptop uh, models. And so we need the uh, Visual Switcher support in order to manage um, these two GPUs to be able to use the i915 GPU if the hardware was configured to use um, a discrete Radeon or NVIDIA GPU by default. So someone called Peter Must ported it in March uh, of this year. And it allows uh, the use of i915 on uh, hybrid graphics laptops. Uh, Peter Must also ported a different subsystem called Apple GMAX. And it's really specific um, to some uh, Apple laptop models, some power books and uh, power Macs. Um, some hybrid graphic laptops provide both GPUs with full video outputs. If you program the i915 GPU, you see something on the screen or on, uh, on an external video output like a VGA port. Same with the NVIDIA or Radeon uh, discrete GPU. But on some particular Apple models, the video outputs are not directly connected to either the screen or the cable, the um, plugs you can use on um, the case. Uh, they are connected to a different component called uh, GMAX. And so we have to program that chip to be able to choose whether to use i915 hardware or NVIDIA hardware, for example. Uh, so since April of this year, uh, we are now able to also for the use of i915 hardware on um, Apple laptops. Uh, unfortunately, this code was directly ported from Linux and not re-implemented. Uh, it's GPL v2 code, so we put it in a separate place. Just to be sure not uh, to mix it with uh, more liberally licensed, licensed code. Um, now about user and software. Um, Dragonfly uses a system called Dports to create packages. Uh, Dports is a um, framework based on FreeBS Dports, which is a repository of package building instructions. And we automatically patch FreeBS Dports to improve Dragonfly support. Uh, so we have an automatic uh, adaptation layer and uh, automatic tests, uh, validation, and so on. Uh, it's single-handedly maintained by a guy called John Marino, and we now have more than 25,000 packages. And it's really a great system for, um, Dragonfly is a small community, and we don't have enough people to maintain uh, such a number of applications. So it's great we are able to reuse uh, FreeSD portals work and uh, automatically uh, create packages from uh, this great work. Um, we um, have, um, well, not the current version of XORG, but the previous one. Uh, we have generally current versions of drivers. Um, uh, the XF86 XF drivers are 2D drivers. And for Intel, this is a bit special for Intel has stopped releasing um, newer versions and uh, we now have to directly uh, use code from their Git uh, repository. So this one is not uh, based on the FreeBSD ports, but is uh, managed locally. And um, Cairo is a library for generally used for 2D accelerations and um, displaying pictures and so on. So it's reasonably current, and MISA is a 3D um, driver library, and is also a um, reasonably current version. Um, concretely, everything related to 2D operations and even 3D OpenGL works fine. 
Um, most graphic environments work fine. I don't think we have any GNOME users, so I don't really know about the state of GNOME, but uh, other desktop environments, so like METI or KDE, uh, are known to work well. Uh, people even um, wrote um, to the Dragonfly IRC channel uh, to congratulate us about the state of KDE support at some point. Um, we also can play 3D games, so generally use Open Arena as a testing uh, framework. Be sure uh, 3D operations still continue to, to work fine after driver updates. And um, it's doing great. Well, I think uh, that was quite fast uh, for um, such an old game. Um, other people have also tested um, uh, GPU calculation frameworks. There's something called Beignet. Uh, I don't really use it myself, but uh, I've heard uh, it is generally in a good state. Um, there's also Wayland. Wayland is a bit mysterious for me. It's a sort of uh, future XORG version or replacement. Um, applications have to be ported, so I can simply uh, use my usual um, usual um, window manager and um, tell it to use Wayland. So that's why I've not really uh, tested it, but other people have, and um, apparently some ver some versions work fine. Uh, especially with the i915 driver. Um, the challenge with newer versions is um, Wayland or some part of Wayland, I've heard about Western, now requires a uh, special library called LimInput to manage um, mouse events, keyboard support, and so on. So people are working on it, but I'm not really involved myself. Uh, we have difficult spots, of course. Uh, one of them is uh, virtual memory management. Uh, in general, graphic drivers um, now try to manage virtual memory. They have their um, they have tentacles deep into uh, some um, kernel virtual memory subsystems. And it's hard to make sure things work properly with non-Linux VM subsystems, since um, the Dragonfly VM is uh, very different from uh, the Linux one. The uh, VM models uh, are not the same. Um, but VM, um, VM is something which is a bit out of my league, so we're lucky to have uh, Matthew Dillon for that. I, I think at this point he's the only one to really understand uh, what's going on uh, with uh, such a low-level subsystem. And of course, uh, the big challenge with i915 is it keeps being rewritten and uh, rewritten. Pe Intel people constantly make changes, much more than uh, with other drivers. And uh, right now, I think I have more than 800 commits uh, from one Linux version to the next. So it's, this makes it difficult um, to continue updating it. So uh, we also have none problem, of course. Uh, some recent GPUs have slight display corruptions in some cases. I've heard about uh, scrambled mouse pointers and so on. Well, minor things. And it's generally only visible on most recent GPUs. So it's possible our i915 driver um, is not um, stable enough for carbide support, for example. So updating it to a newer um, Linux version could probably fix that. Um, we also have problem with um, some uh, acceleration features like last level cache support in the 2D driver. Um, it's probably something we're not doing correctly. 
uh, in memory management, virtual memory management, or, um, and our chemalock functions also are known to behave differently than Linux. Um, one thing um, I didn't understand at first is uh, Linux version of chemalock provides physically contiguous memory ranges. But the Dragonfly version only provides virtually contiguous memory ranges. S um, GPU and CPU parts of the chips are not completely current. If we write something from the CPU to cache memory, it will not be completely pushed to real memory and the GPU part of the chip will not see it. Same in the other directions. So we, we have to make sure um, cache memory is properly managed and um, we should try to fix our chemalock function to make sure it uses uh, physically contiguous uh, memory ranges. So that's probably one of the reasons we have some slight uh, display corruption uh, in some in some rare cases. Um, now about the future, well, an obvious um, future thing to do will be to continue updating uh, the NI15 driver. At this point, I guess most people, most Dragonfly users have Intel hardware, Intel GPU hardware. Some rare people also use Radeon hardware, but um, a rough guess of my part will be more than 90% of people use Intel hardware. Most people use laptops these days and uh, most laptops uh, use Intel chips. Um, we, so we need to continue updating the NI15 driver. And well, of course, Intel keeps uh, creating a new driver family, new GPU family, so we have to. Uh, otherwise, uh, Dragonfly will not be able to work on uh, recent uh, GPU families and on recent laptops. Uh, ra the Radeon drivers also need some love, but since there is such a low amount of users, uh, it's a bit difficult um, to improve. It still uses all the APIs and uh, FreeBSD or Dragonfly specific code. It has not been fully um, a BRE based on Linux. Um, other things to do will be to use formal test shoots and um, run benchmarks and so on. Try to find out the more, in a sort of automatic way, um, regressions and uh, fix the thing immediately. Uh, another future things to at least investigate is uh, high resolution timer support. Uh, Linux uses um, a subsystem called Escher Timer. And we currently have an implementation of that subsystem in Dragonfly, which is based on uh, the old Callout mechanism, which was an original BSD mechanism, probably implemented in 1987. And it's not high resolution at all. It's about, uh, it varies about 100 times per second. Uh, at some point, points, it would be interesting to re-implement uh, high-resolution timers uh, with a real high-resolution backend. And some developers, um, well, I think it was mostly Imre Vadas, has began to investigate. And in theory, um, using um, this facility properly would mean we could have important power savings. So right now, um, a modern laptop such as uh, Skylake ones uses about uh, two or three watts per default just uh, displaying XO pictures. And um, if we manage to 
drastically limits the number of times interrupt or um, periodic functions fire, we could tremendously decrease CPU time, uh, de decrease used CPU time, and uh, generally uh, improve power savings and uh, get a much better battery life on a laptop. Um, now this is about the people involved. Well, um, I um, supported the drivers. Um, David Shaw was the original JSOC student, uh, which gave us many ideas. And uh, many, many people were also involved and uh, helped uh, for various things um, dur during these last four years. Uh, so I'm done. Uh, do you have any questions? Um, you talked about uh, formal test suites. Uh, are there any, and how do they work? Uh, well, there are, um, there's a known Intel test suite. Um, the name X kept me at the moment. Uh, but at some point, um, s some people uh, try to use it. Um, there's also an OpenGL test suite and an XORG one. Um, but uh, I've been relatively busy trying to keep up with Intel um, upgrades and uh, I've not properly used them uh, since a few years now. Have you ever tried to uh, upstream some small changing to the Linux kernel code? Uh, some things that you, you, you could benefit or some other b BSD could benefit? Um, yeah, uh, at some point I found a hardware bug on a particular Supermicro motherboard and um, I reported it as a bug on um, some channel. I think it was DRM Next, I'm not so sure anymore. And uh, the fix uh, was pushed, um, was implemented by one of the Intel developers and it's known in the Linux kernel. But in general, uh, we don't have many things to push since we're already using um, a relatively old version of Linux. Um, at some points, I have found bugs in the i915 drivers, uh, driver or maybe once in the DRM subsystem in general, but um, when I checked on um, the current git master, of, um, it was already fixed, yeah. So, no, uh, right now our um, focus is not on trying to push changes uh, to DRM Next or Linux. It's about uh, being the most Linux compatible as possible. Hi. Um, I saw on the mailing list of FreeBSD, they're also making a Linux KPI for porting mm -hmm. DRM uh, drivers. Is there some, uh, do you work together with each other or are they totally separate projects? Uh, well, it's a separate project in the sense that it's being maintained in a FreeBSD. But uh, that KPI subsystem was originally based on uh, more limit, uh, limited Linux uh, also Linux KPI, a uh, subsystem which was called differently, I don't remember the name. It was used for um, high performance network hardware and um, Melanox hardware, um, uh, Ofen, yeah, Ofed, Ofed, yeah, uh, that was the Ofed stack. And uh, I originally took some of that code from the Ofed stack. Uh, if you check the copyright uh, uh, mentions in uh, the Linux uh, something that edge uh, drivers, uh, we have in Dragonfly code originating from FreeBSD and the Offset stack. And in the other directions, uh, one of the Offset developers took some of my changes and uh, incorporated in uh, that Linux KPI subsystem. So changes work both ways, but they, they cannot really be maintained in a common tree for uh, many details are specific to Dragonfly or FreeBSD kernels. Uh, 
Uh, does Dragonfly implement the user pointer interface? Uh, sorry, I didn't uh, completely err. Uh, does Dragonfly implement the DRM user pointer interface? Uh, so DRM user pointer interface? Right, so it lets you basically uh, malloc memory and then use an I.O. control to create a gem object that's backed by, by user malloc ah, memory. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, uh, yeah, there are some IOCTL which allows the use of um, user generated uh, data uh, without having to copy it and um, change it um, in one way or another. Uh, I think this IOCTL is disabled at the moment. Uh, well, implemented it, um, implementing it requires some work and, um, well, I, I prefer to keep uh, upgrading um, i915 driver versions uh, than uh, trying to, to take that. I, it could be helpful to improve performance, but at some right now, what we need is to, to continue um, updating the driver and make sure we still work with um, newer Intel hardware. So I, it will probably be changed at some point, but this is not the highest priority right now. So the, in, in uh, recent um, uh, MISA and so on, there is a lot of work uh, where they are using uh, file descriptor passing instead of shared memory directly. Uh, I, I forgot the name of the, uh, the, the call that, 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 that has been used for that. Uh, have you done some work also to support uh, these uh, uh, file descriptor passing APIs rather than the old uh, shared memory interfaces? Uh, well, not really. Um, I have not... Um been deeply involved with Meta um, since a long time. Um, one of the recent MISA changes um, was a bit problematic, but it was, I think, one year ago. Um, maybe this is a performance optimization, but I have not... Uh, uh, it's a security issue, okay. Uh, well, no, I have not really followed the, that change. Um, I'm mostly focusing on um, the i915 drivers these days. Well, uh, in general, uh, we take um, Mesa packages, uh, the Meta port as present in the uh, FreeBSD uh, port tree, and uh, we don't really change it. Okay, so say so yeah. At some point, we will probably need to to add support to the new kernel interfaces. But uh, right now, uh, nobody has really uh, thought about it. <laughs> 